Hey there, so we are gonna go behind the image from a family session this time, and I'm gonna break down little decisions that I made, a lens choice that I switched to, and some placement of my subjects in order to take a standard family driveway portrait and make it look more epic. So I'm showing you the best shot of the day and also comparing it to a shot that was just so-so and explaining the difference so that you can make subtle tweaks in your family portraits the next time you're shooting as well. So sometimes when you're photographing a family, it can be a little chaotic, a lot of moving parts, and your focus is just getting the kids to cooperate and smile. And a lot of times, the strate at least for me, the part that I love about shooting portraits and weddings is I have more control and I can technically make decisions um, that produce more epic looking portraits. And I have found that it's very easy to lose that technical aspect when you're focused on just getting kids to behave and, and listen and look the right direction all at the same time. And so what I wanna show you in this um, is that you can actually make some technical decisions and set up a shot to be more technically epic. Um, and then once you get that decision made in the setup and they're in the right spot with the right light, then because you've done the technical work and you've made the technical changes, then you can focus on getting them right in the right position, making sure the kids are on board and engaged and getting the right looks and the right poses. But with family, with family sessions, I do think you have to make a conscious decision to find these technical changes in order to be able to have the capacity to get that more epic portrait look. So I'm gonna show you two different portraits. One looks pretty standard, one looks really beautiful and it's just more, cap it, it captivates you when you see it and the other one is just so-so. So I'm gonna break down what really made the biggest difference between these two portraits. So let's go behind the scenes. You can watch these portraits happen and be taken in real time. You ready for this? Hand in the pocket for Philip, that extra hand. Unle Yo, that's good. Oh my gosh, how <laughs> precious are they? Smile in here, girls. One, two, and three. Y'all are hams. You are, and I love it. Perfect. Everybody's laughing at the girls. Mom and dad are looking at the girls laughing. Yes! Perfect! Okay, now listen. Now listen. This is important. Your mama needs this for her new wall. Okay, you ready? All right. So you're smiling, looking right here. One, two, and... Again, I'm doing a voiceover so that you don't have to hear me scream. I'm shooting a little farther back because this is shot at 70 millimeters. So that is why it looks more like a 50 millimeter or an 85 millimeter um, level of like compression and bokeh. Uh, if I was shooting at 28 millimeters, you would be able to see almost every individual pine tree in the background and it, they wouldn't stand out from the background. I mean, this is a very busy background. This is not ideal. This is not what I would choose. So if I'm going to use it, I wanna to try to fit it into what I think makes the best portrait, which is a clean background. And the only way that I can make a clean background is to use a higher compression lens and a wider aperture. And so I, that's why I'm shooting at 70 millimeters. That's why I'm further away from them. That's why I'm screaming so loud, which makes it hard for you to listen to me. So I think I'm done shouting. I will go back to the original audio now. So I'm gonna no cover up your, I'm gonna cover up your pink. Okay, tuck that in, there you go. Now this is what I'd love for you. Can she go on the outside of you? So you yes, get really close Tom. to Philip. Go put your hands like on your knees maybe. Okay, no. so this is great. So you're gonna turn in towards Philip a little bit. Oh, okay. There you go. Oh no, hey. I kind of like what you were doing. Oh. This is good. Are you able to put an arm around her waist? Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Now, Ash, instead of holding on to your dad dad's forehead, Just can you lightly hold on to like his shoulder without oh, falling? Yeah. I'm not going to move. Don't you okay. Pull on my he shirt. is really, and put that wow. down. See if you can look at, see, maybe so put the arm right here. Like yeah, that. there you yeah. go. That's good. Are you ready? Now, guys, yeah. I got to go far back because this lens is so big. Okay. Are you ready? Everybody looking in here? I'm a narwhal and I'm talking to you. <laughs> now, Josie, where is your smile? There it is. Oh, I love it. Okay, all the, the girls are laughing at Birdie and May and Philip are laughing at each other. Okay, every, oh my heavens, I love it. Now stay just like you are, this is so good. Um, okay, so there's a few things. I wish I had scooted May over a little closer. Um, that would have been a little bit better. I am shooting with an 85 millimeter now, so I am getting the bokeh like crazy. Um, I'm shooting pretty wide for a group shot, and you might think I'm wild, but I, if I'm focusing on the person in, person in front, then I normally don't have any focus issues. Um, maybe someone that's in the back will be just a s slightly soft, um, but in this setting, like I thought it was just fine. I love that shot with Josie laughing and everyone smiling at her. So good. Okay, let's put you dead center. And let's have, oh, Ash, you want to pick your spot in front of Mama or Daddy? Which one? Both. Right there. Could we actually have you both squat? Yeah. Is that okay? Me and Ashley? Yeah. Well, um, or Ash can stand up if the parents, if y'all both oh, want to yes, squat. Yes, yes, yes. And that, I'm trying to get y'all's faces close to them without yes. having to hold them. Yes, okay. 
So if you squat like this, and then Ashley, can you take this arm and hold onto your mama here, like right there? Yeah, just like that. Now, Ashley, can you stand up and hold onto your dad's arm? Sorry, Josie, you're right. I'm, I'm talking too fast. Ooh, Ash, your leg crossed, that was beautiful. Now, Emmy, you're gonna have to back up. <laughs> okay, hey, Josie girl. Oh, that's perfect. Now, May, if you can, scoot a little closer to Philip. There you go. Ash, you holding on tight, girlfriend? Smile. Oh, that's perfect, Phil. Smile in here. One, two. Yes! Oh my goodness. Narwhal. I'm a narwhal talking to you. Yes! Beautiful. Okay, I want everybody laughing at your mama. Philip, you're laughing at your mama. At your mama. Okay, perfect. Girls, you're laughing at me. Mama and daddy are looking at each other. Yes! Forehead to forehead to forehead for mama and daddy. Okay. Hey, this is what I'm gonna do. Pause, freeze, just for a second. You ready? I'm gonna have you come on this side of Daddy. He's gonna hold his arm around you. There you go. Can y'all hold hands somehow? Oh no, you cannot. No, I have a special job for you. Ready? Y'all can hold hands. There you go. Can y'all be forehead to forehead? Ash, you heart, you hold around your mama's neck. There you go. You ready, Josie? You ready, Ashley? Her dress. Oh yes. Let me pull it down just a little bit. I gotta see it so it looks flowy. Chloe. Ash, you want to cross your legs like you did a minute ago? That was so good. Okay, perfect. Yes, everyone smiling here. Yes! May and Philip go back to what you were doing. That was so good. Okay, so what made this, I, it, you might not think it's that good, but I, I really like it. Um, I think what went into this, making it my favorite, is that they're connected, they're on the same level, and their faces are close. I just think that a resounding theme that I'm desiring in these portraits of families is that I want their faces to be closer because they look more connected, and compositionally, it's easier to frame it. Okay, so in the video, you could see me making some of these technical changes, but they're very subtle, and they're very precise, and so I'm gonna break down, comparing two different images from what you just sh saw me shoot, um, and break down what these different technical changes did, and how you can see these changes show up in the final image. So the first image that you see here on the screen, um, this is not a bad family portrait. It's actually a beautiful family portrait. But when I look at this, there's nothing that makes me stop and stare a little bit longer. There's nothing that makes me think like, oh, I'm kind of in awe of this, right? Um, so why, why is this not necessarily the best. Let's break that down. Well, um, there's a few things. One, compositionally, it's not bad, right? We have them kind of, you know, the, the negative space here is leading to them. We do have some negative space here that's not super purposeful. Um, so it might have been better if they were more positioned um, on this side a little bit more. That, that would have helped a little bit. But in general, the composition is not bad. So let's talk about another thing that I see here um, that could be a little bit better. I'm seeing a lot of detail here in these trees. Um, I'm using a wider aperture, like I'm shooting at 2.0, but when I look at this, I think, man, I could really have that background melt away even more if I was using an 85 millimeter, if I was shooting a little bit more wide open. Now, you may think, Caitlin, a family of four? You're gonna shoot more wide open? Probably so, yes. And I think the reason why I feel comfortable with that is because I'm gonna slow down, I'm gonna be very strategic. And so um, let's look at another thing about this image that I don't necessarily think is working in my favor. Um, I think that the composition here could have been so much better. I think in my mind, I was trying to use the curve of the road to fill the composition, but what happens is the way that I have these uh, my subjects placed, I am cutting off the curve and the impact of that composition right where I just put that red X, right? Really, the family should either be a little further right, but honestly, the more that I think about it, they really should have been here so that the composition of the road was leading to the subject and then back off the page. That would have been more strategic and that would have taken this photo from being just so-so to being more captivating, more visually appealing to actually look at. And so compositionally, I would have made that change and I would have posed them in a way where I could fill the frame better. Um, what I find here as I'm looking at it is that I feel like there's just a lot of negative space here. There's a block of negative space here and I've really missed an opportunity to create lead lines where something is pointing directly to a subject that was here. Instead, I placed them poorly and I missed out on that opportunity. The other thing that I'm paying attention to is the fact that my horizon line, it's not bad, right? It's not bad that we have some, some 
brown kind of needles here and we have like some busyness here but i think there's probably a better way to use the driveway to my advantage and to use the background to my advantage so i think it'd probably be more impactful if i just had a single horizon line in the background and that is what you're going to see me transition to in the next image all right so now we're looking at the image that i am super proud of this family actually has this image blown up huge over their fireplace in their brand new home i'm so proud of it and I'm like, why is this image so much better than the other one? First things first, I'm shooting more wide open and I'm shooting with a completely different lens. You, if you've been a part of this channel for a while, you're gonna get so sick of me talking about my 85 millimeter, but this was shot with the 85 millimeter, look at the background, right? You can tell they're in a driveway, you can tell they're in the woods, but it is just melting away. You could barely see the difference between the driveway line and the tree line. Um, you can barely make out individual trees in the background where when you look at the past, um, the image I showed you previously, you could totally see more detail in the tree. So what happens when all of that detail kind of melts away into a blurry, creamy background, all the focus is going here. And they are stick, it's almost like they're in sharp focus, but right behind their heads, the background just kind of melts away. And I like that because I'm shooting on a driveway, right? You're shooting on a driveway, there's nothing about the driveway that I'm trying to accentuate. Now, if this was a family portrait in front of like the Grand Canyon of Yellowstone, well then there'd be a purpose for seeing the background. I want the driveway to melt away. They've got a beautiful driveway. They actually have really great light. You can see kind of like this lighting um, hitting from like the opening of the trees. That's another thing, not to get ahead of myself, but another thing that I did here by scooting them, you saw this in the video, by scooting them down the driveway, I turned the direction of the light. They had more available secondary light in front of them. That's why their faces are so well lit. There are no eye socket shadows. There's not even deep shadows underneath their necks. It was so easy to edit. So that was a lighting shift that made a big difference. But really, when I look at this, I strategically moved them to a place where there was better light and there's more of what I said pr previously, kind of like a single horizon line. Instead of seeing the curve of um, the driveway in the background, it just became uh, busy in the other photo and it wasn't strategic. It wasn't helping me out. It was just causing a little bit more visual complication. So I like that there's a single horizon line. I like that it's hitting them right kind of at everyone's collarbone or shoulders. I also like that the pose of this makes it so they are filling the frame um, more completely. They're framed really well. Like this is our negative space. This is our negative space. There's not an abundance of negative space like we saw previously in the other portrait. But honestly, the biggest impact of all of this is that I was shooting so wide open and I was shooting with a high compression lens. So let's talk about this. Where did my focal point lie when I'm photographing a family of four and shooting below 2.0 with a high compression lens somewhat close to them? Um, well, I'm paying attention to, I do wish that Josie's foot was not cut off. That was a little bit of an oversight, a little bit of a bummer, but honestly, it's framed in their living room and I never notice it when I see it, but I do notice it now. Um, the focal point is gonna be on Josie because Josie is in front of dad's leg. So that's making me realize she's actually in front of Ashley, the other sister as well. And so the focal point needs to be on Josie's eyes um, in order to make sure that everyone else is behind the focal point. So uh, I also wanna make sure there was a shot, I think before this, you may not have seen it in the, in the footage, um, there was a shot where Josie was kind of standing more out in front. She wasn't leaning back into dad. Her leaning back into dad is important because it got her face closer to the rest of the group so that they are more in focus when I'm shooting at a wider aperture and she's just slightly in front. So all of these little things combine to make a more epic portrait. It's a framing adjustment. It is precision more with, with a lens choice, higher compression, wider aperture. It's a composition choice, right? I simplified the composition. They are just centered in the middle of this photo. I'm not trying to use the curve of the driveway. Um, last but not least, I strategically kept them away from the background here. So I wanted to pull them off of the background because it allows for even more space and differentiation between the subjects and the trees and the busyness. So when I look at this photo, I'm proud of it because this was not an epic location. I remember when the when the client was like, do you think we could just shoot in the driveway? I was like, yeah, sure, the driveway. But honestly, these tiny little decisions are what led me to be able to create beautiful, really light and airy portraits in the depths of the woods. So if you ever find yourself thinking, I can't shoot beautiful, bright images, I'm shooting in the middle of the woods, Go back, watch this on All Access. You'll be full of inspiration of how you can take beautiful family portraits in a less than ideal location. You can watch this entire session 
It's actually paired with another family session that I shot in the middle, like suburbia. Um, I found one like cherry tree and we created some blossom photos with a family of four. If you are interested, if you're a family photographer and you want to watch me shoot family sessions from behind the scenes, you can do that. And it's the most affordable real life education that we offer in our entire collection of resources for photographers. So I hope you will check it out. There's a link below. You can dive in, become a member. I'm actually meeting up with our all access members, um, real time live on a zoom call, um, and answer your questions. So if you need kind of a personal coach in your life and you want to be able to ask someone real life questions about your photography journey, joining all access is a way that you can do that as well. So the link is in the description. Make sure you like and subscribe so that you can join us next week for another video to help transform your business. Bye.